I want to discuss a little bit about barrel harmonics. It's a very confusing subject and I've watched many hours of people talk about it, so this is kind of a condensed, simple version of how it works for the layman to understand what's going on when you shoot a rifle, what's going on in the barrel. So what happens initially is your bullet goes off, your bullet starts down the barrel and it gets lodged in the rifling and there's a, a lot of pressure spiking at that point to make the bullet squish down and form into the rifling and then start going again. So you have a pressure spike right here, right in front of where your cartridge is, typically, and then the bullet starts traveling down the barrel. And because of this explosion and pressure spike, that causes the barrel to vibrate. All right, so your barrel is vibrating, and when your bullet leaves the end of the barrel, if it's in the middle of the roughest part of the vibration, you're going to have holes in your target all over the place, all spread out. Mostly if you keep shooting, they're gonna be in a circular type pattern, and that's because your barrel, when it vibrates, vibrates in a circle. It goes that way, and then that way, and then that way, and then that way. That might be oversimplified, but that's basically what's going on. Your barrel's vibrating. Uh, so what you wanna do is you wanna shoot, you want your bullet to go down, and you want it to exit at the end of a swing. So any vibration has a point when the swing stops and the next swing starts. So you're trying to catch it at just that sweet spot so it exits when the barrel is at its least amount of motion. And then when that happens, your barrel and your bullet are exactly in the same place every time, and your bullet exits and hits the same place on the target. Uh, you start having bullets hit other bullets at 100 yards. So that's the goal to this entire experiment, to make your rifle shoot accurately. Now, I wish there were a very simple way to say, okay, you can measure your barrel and, you know, do some studying and figure out what to do to make it do this, but you can't. It's got to be done through experimentation. So what you can do is one method is you buy different bullets and go shoot them at the range and see which ones uh, give you the best performance and the best grouping. Old guy at Cabela's told me, oh, you need to find a bullet that you're your gun likes, you buy one box of bullets and you go shoot it. And then you buy another box and go shoot it and see which one it likes better. And then you buy a third box of bullet and go shoot it. And pretty soon you're gonna find a box of bullets sooner or later that shoots really good and your rifle likes that box of bullets. Well, what he didn't know what he was explaining was you're randomly picking different bullets and uh, finding one that matches the barrel harmonics. Manufacturers of the higher end bullets are very good at keeping their lots consistent. So if you buy Remington 165 grain core locks for seven mag this year and then buy it again 10 years from now, it's gonna shoot the same in your rifle because they're gonna load it and put the same bullet in it. And they're gonna load it with the same type of powder and all that and match the grains. So uh, that's the bullet method. And you can even go in and you can buy, let's say, different grain weights and try, you know, let's try the 150s, the 165s, the 180s, and go up until you find one that matches your harmonics. Uh, you can buy like all the same brand. You can buy like Federal and get the Acubons, and then buy Federal again and get the partition bullets, and then buy Federal again and get the other nozzle bullet they put in it. And so there's lots of different choices, but it gets kind of expensive when you're talking about $30 a box of bullet on average for most hunting rounds. Um, now, that, give or take, that can be lower for some and higher for others. It just depends on what you're buying. And uh, I've seen hunting rounds, the, the high-end trophy class, that are you know up around $60 a box. So that gets real expensive real fast. All right, so that's the bullet method. The next method to getting a harmonious exchange with your rifle and a bullet is uh, most rifles that are bolt actions have the barrel sitting in here, and you have a screw here and a screw here that lock it in. You know, one right in front of the trigger and one right behind the trigger. And then if you go in and you take something like a piece of paper that's folded up and stick it in here, you're gonna make a third point of contact, then go shoot it. Then move the piece of paper again and shoot it. Move the piece of paper again and shoot it. What you're doing is you're changing the point of contact on your barrel, so you're thus changing your barrels uh, vibration 
by moving a, a piece on it. So kind of think like if you're playing the guitar and how they put their hand on the neck of the guitar and their fingers on the string and they move them back and forth and they can change the note. By doing that with that piece of paper, you're changing the vibration of your barrel, much like changing the note on a guitar st string using your fingers. Uh, the other method that you can try is there's a company called Limb Saver that makes a rubber piece that goes on your barrel. You put the rubber piece on, you shoot it. Then you move the rubber piece and shoot it. Then you move the rubber piece and shoot it. Then you move the rubber piece and shoot it. And what you're doing there is you're using the weight of the rubber piece on the barrel to change its vibration pattern until you find that sweet spot where the bullet exits on there. So let's say you do a lot of research and you decide, oh, I got to use these trophy grade Acubon uh, Nosler bullets made by Federal. They're the best thing since sliced bread. Well, uh, if you can't shim your rifle to match them for whatever reason, because it, maybe it's a free float and it, doesn't, it has too much room or who knows why, uh, you can buy a limb saver and move it up and down on it. So um, third way to do it is the reloader's method. Okay, so I reload my bullets. So what I'll do is I'll take a cartridge, I'll pick a bullet, a cartridge and a powder I want to use that I heard is good. And I'll load the powder charge as low as I can out of my book. So on the low end of the range. And then I'll go up on the next. I'll do four like that. And then the next four will be a half grain higher. And the next four will be a half grain higher. And the next four will be a half grain higher than that. So I'm going up in powder charge by little increments. And it'll probably allow me, you know, like sometimes it takes 12... Uh, 12 increments to go up to find the best uh, solution. But what I'm doing is I'm changing the amount of powder in here and everything else stays the same. The primer stays the same, the bullet depth stays the same, the bullet, everything stays the same. And I'm just finding that powder combination that sends my bullet out at the end of the swing. And once I find that, then I write it down and I got my load for that gun and I'm good to go from then on out with that particular bullet. Uh, and uh, load and everything's recorded and measured. So again, I hope this helps y'all understand uh, why your bullets don't always go through the same hole, how sometimes they're spread out, and also gives you a solution to get them to all go through the same hole and make little cute uh, uh, clover patterns in your targets. Again, you can Try different brands of bullets and different weights of bullets until you find one that matches your harmonic of your barrel. You can uh, use the limb saver weight or shim uh, your stock to change the vibration in your barrel to match. Or you can reload, which is the easiest way that I know of once you buy all the equipment. And you can weigh your charges until you find just the right combination and you do it through the ladder method through increments until you find just the right exit. And I've done this over the years many times where I've taken a bullet that shoots like crap and made it shoot all through the same hole uh, by the end of my, uh, my methods. So anyway, I hope this helps you. Um, you know, the ladder method also, it's a lot of initial cost to buy reloading gear, but in the end, you save money overall if you shoot enough. So you can figure out how much it costs like for instance, a seven mag, I can load for about 65 cents. Uh, I can buy seven mag at $27 a box of uh, 20. So pretty much every time I shoot my seven mag and I make the bullet myself, I'm saving myself, instead of $1.40, I'm paying 65 cents. So basically I'm saving 75 cents every time I shoot. And it's like that on many of the high-end cartridges. Not to mention you get great performance and you get to pick the projectile you want and uh, all that and get it to shoot just right. So hope this is a help to y'all uh, and happy shooting.